Well, I recently upgraded the uh, Garmin panel in here to the NXI. It used to just be a regular G1000. And as part of that process, what they had to do was swap out these three screens, as well as this box here for the keypad, joystick, and uh, the FMS control there. But uh, everything else stayed put. So the intercom, boxes on the edges, autopilot, all that stuff. So for this video, I thought we'd talk about you know why someone would do this upgrade. What's the point of uh, going from the G1000 to the NXI? And one of the ways to pretty quickly illustrate that is just simply power it up. So we're on the GPU, we'll go ahead and turn that on. And watch how quickly it boots. So on the G1000, you'd be sitting sweltering on the ramp for 10, 15, 20 seconds easily. This is booted in just a few seconds. It's already ready for me to go. So let me turn off the speaker here. That's one nice thing. The other benefits here are in some of the features that can now be powered by the faster processors and better GPUs. So we're in the hangar and uh, I don't know how much lack of GPS coverage is going to inhibit this demo here, but we shall give it a shot here. So everything's just way more responsive. There's no kind of hitching or delaying whenever you try to give it an input. Here the joystick is more of an analog joystick feel as opposed to just sort of a digital feel where there's um, it's just a smoother flow here and the map is keeping up a lot better with my cursor movements as I'm trying to scroll. Say I was going to look at some weather that was closer to the destination, which I do on many flights, that's, uh, that's handy. Uh, the system will now also allow you to input a departure and destination runway. And I haven't really figured out the benefits of that yet. Um, one of the drawbacks is that the extended center lines seem to get turned off when you turn a runway, make a runway choice. So that was kind of a drawback to me, but um, I know one of the features is a visual approach option. So let's say, let's throw a destination in here. Type in K Jazz, it asks for the runway. I'll pick that. Now, if I was to hit procedure and go into the approach, um, ultimately they'll have a visual approach option in here instead of just the normal instrument approaches. In the TBM, that feature is not enabled yet for the NXI, so um, they expect that to come on a later update. And there's some little minor things that they, I'm hoping they'll update, things like the little G there. Let's see if I can write it out right there. It isn't centered, and I've seen the little B on the under the amps there shaking around, kind of back and forth in its little tick. Minor stuff. Um, one nice thing is that the radar starts up a self-test right when you power up the aircraft. Before, I think it it did not do that. I never heard it doing that, and now it's very obvious. And so the radar comes up much faster. It can go into weather mode much quicker. I'm not going to do that sitting here in the hangar, irradiate myself too much. But um, another little bug I saw was, you know, this kind of scale marker is sort of messed up and it's only drawing the radar returns in this cone area here, whereas it used to extend more of the screen. So my hope is they'll clean that up <clears throat> in a later update. Um, and then one of the other features that you can't see because of the GPS being unavailable in here is showing a map inside the HSI. So here is the traditional G1000 view where the HSI is just simple, no map in there. And then on the PFD side, the primary, or the PFD1 side over here in front of the pilot, I normally have this enabled where you can see a map. It, it's a nice feature. It's not kind of an earth shattering thing for me. I still Maybe it's just habit, but I still tend to look over at this map here anyway, uh, for the most part. Another upgrade we did was um, ADS-B in, 
so I can see ADSB traffic on the screen here, and it merges it with active traffic from another system that's already installed. And that's really cool. I, get, I feel like my traffic picture is a lot better here, and all of that gets forwarded over to my iPad on ForeFlight, which is, um, it just makes that all that much better. In fact, ForeFlight will fuse not only the data stream from the Garmin's, but also when I have my Sentry or my Stratus up here, uh, all that will all merge together in the app to kind of give a maximum picture. Data updates are way faster too. One of the things that's interesting is that you can upload IFR charts and VFR charts now, sectionals. When that's missing, they, they, they consider that a problem detected, which really isn't. I just don't subscribe to that. And another improvement they did was to the, what I call profile view. And they call that the vertical situation display now. And of course that's not going to work either. This will show the vertical aspects of your climb and descents um, so that you can kind of look at how you're going to it relative to terrain in that regard. And also it'll show if you have a crossing restriction, things like that. So they've enhanced the profile view a bit. Another nice thing that they do when, it, when this works, it's really cool. Um, so when it can figure out what a frequency is, and we're on this green frequency, that's the active right now, it will show that under this little black bar area, we'll give a label. So this should be saying KEDC tower uh, at the moment. Maybe because GPS is off, they probably have to use that to filter down of all the possible 120.3s which one makes the most sense for where we are right now. Um, I found that doesn't work as well in, in route when we're up high and talking to different centers. Sometimes it does, sometimes it's just blank like this, but uh, when it does work, it's great because if you did not catch the name of the facility you're supposed to be talking to next, it will uh, be there and uh, let you know that you're talking to Houston Center, for example. Anyway, that covers what I thought I'd show about the NXI so far. I do uh, hope to get the software update down the road to add visual approaches, uh, surface watch, which is a big feature when you're taxiing around on the ground, and some of these other cleanups. And so if and when that happens, I'll be sure to uh, post another video and go over the latest highlights. Thanks for watching.